I'm not a scratch golfer, and I'm not expecting to break par today. From the gold tees at Silver Rock, my index of 7.4 translates to a course handicap of 10, meaning my target score is 82, and I wish more golfers would manage their expectations like this. To evaluate my round, I'm going to tabulate where I'm giving up those 10 or more strokes relative to a scratch golfer so that I can tailor my practice to address my weaknesses. I'm not a long hitter, averaging only 240 or 250 off the tee, which most courses won't punish you for. Instead, I lose most of my strokes here, between the tee and the green. Although here on one, I hit a dagger to 8 feet from 175, which actually gains me strokes relative to the scratch player. And I should expect to make some of these from 8 feet, so missing it hands the strokes right back. After a good drive on two, I should be able to set myself up for a wedge in for my third. I top this down the fairway and lose some strokes, but not too many because I'm still in position to hit the green. But this one is also going to cost me a bit, dumping it into a greenside bunker. So is this. I leave myself with a tough up and down here. That's not a terrible effort. And now I'm going to take a good look at Mike's putt here. I see the line, and I see this putt isn't as slick as it appears, and it allows me to get over mine and drain it. I mentioned that this is where I lose the majority of my strokes to the scratch player. I do manage to catch a piece of green here from 170, but I have about 40 feet in. And any time I manage to two putt from this range, I am definitely gaining some strokes. That's another fairway finder here on 4. And from 145 in, my approach technically misses the green a pace short, but that's fine. A scratch player should two-putt from here virtually 100% of the time, and especially from here. But I pull it, and lose my first full stroke to the scratch player. That's another respectable drive on 5, although with our approach shot we're a bit unlucky with a blind shot and an uphill lie. And from this distance, we actually put it to about 10 feet, which gains us some strokes. But this one doesn't even flirt with the hole, and we'll walk out with just a par. This is our first bad drive of the day. It's going to find the water here, which costs us one penalty, and leaving ourselves 260 into a par 4 really costs us another stroke. We're just expecting to make 4 from 260, and we hit a forward and a wedge to a decent spot. We should two-putt from here 100% of the time, and we do. It's steady going on the seventh hole. This is actually my best drive of the day, rolling out quite a bit. And this forward puts us in pretty good position to hit the green with a short iron. From there, we hit a dagger here to just four or five feet. It's a downhill slider, and missing this one costs us a bit but we won't complain making par on a 580 yard hole. With the advantage of hitting off of a tee here, this one is quite a bit short. The down the line camera angle disguises the total length of this putt, but it is three putt territory. And I'll take a good look at Carson's here. I see that it peels a bit right, aim mine at the left edge and make it. This is another tough par four, and hitting it offline leaves us unable to reach it in two. And we're going to lose some strokes on the layup here too, because it finds a waste area. And we're going to lose more here, chunking it out of the waste area. From here we're just expecting to make a three. And we overread the downhill ten footer just a bit, and have to settle for a double on nine. Netting all of this out is interesting. I don't gain any strokes with my driver, so hitting just two wayward ones cost me more strokes than anything else did cumulatively on the front. And we also lost more strokes on the greens than we're used to. And candidly, I'm not too upset given my game to only lose one and a half strokes to the scratch player with my approach shots. We start the back nine a bit dangerously here with a drive that almost finds the water but stays alive. And this one's all over the flagstick and is going to give us another good look at birdie. But we miss it just a hair low and walk out with a par. I mentioned in my last video that on par threes like this, 
my priority is to avoid big numbers and not go flag hunting when there's this much danger in play. I get stuck in a pretty tricky spot here. And this lag putt is pretty good and will give me a look at three. But that's another frustrating miss from makeable range. That's another good drive for me. And with this approach, I push it quite a bit off my target line. It's not one of my better ones. And unfortunately, I leave this one in a pretty tricky spot. I always take my time to look at putts like this. Always looking at it from behind the hole and on the lower side of the slope. I note that something in front of me is right on my intended line with this putt. I nonetheless hit a great one here. And even the tap-in's tricky, but we make it. Most scratch players are going to be hitting a wedge from 130 off a tee. I'm hitting 8-iron, and I miss the green a bit short. And this is actually tricky. And I'm happy to get out of here with what is technically an up and down. Some undulating topography here means that this drive rolls out to 270. And this one's also going to roll out to 230, but I totally missed on the wrong side here. Even from 50 yards on this approach, I can't get anywhere near the pin. But that's a good lag putt. Mm, nice shot. Is that par? And we'll take par here. This is the last long par 4 on the course. And this miss off the tee leaves me with an unreachable number, about 235, and playing uphill. Dumping this into a bunker is another mistake. And that's my worst shot of the day inside 100 yards. I'm in an impossible spot here now. And I'm unlucky that that one stops there. And I've had about enough pain by this point. But I realize I gotta put everything in for the video. And of course when they don't matter, they seem to go in. For my money, this is the prettiest hole at Silver Rock. And this one does make it, but it's right up against a rock, and I spend lots of time figuring out how to play it. I even damage my wedge. With no backswing, I can't quite get this one to the green. And it would be easy to resign on this hole, but the reality is that the scorecard doesn't discriminate between putts for birdie and putts for bogey from off the green. So I take my time, and even though I miss this one a bit low, I am able to knock it in for the bogey. Nice one. We find the fairway on the last par 5 of the day. But this shot misses its intended line, and also finds a tough waste area. Oh, we're chunk it. <laughs> chunk it right out of the waste area, and that's going to cost us. And look how tricky this is. A scratch player might have done better as a result, but nonetheless, we're all going to make a lot of threes from here. This one actually flirts with the hole. And I'll get out with a bogey. The 18th is actually drivable, but I miss my line a bit, and my ball gets sent a bit right of the green. That's a really lousy effort there with a the wedge. And I'll admit, after taking my time over a lot of putts today, I didn't really respect this one. And it cost me having a good look at making the up and down. And we have to take a bogey on 18 nice as well. Finish. Thanks very much. And this round highlights that I lose most of my strokes to the scratch golfer with the approach. Today I lost more on the greens to him than I probably usually do. And a couple of wayward drives with no strokes gained with driver cost me a bit there too.